Today we're here with the Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, and we're going to be discussing the U.S. cyber capability to defect and protect the United States' cyber infrastructure. What is DHS's role in cybersecurity and the U.S. government infrastructure and the commercial infrastructure? So I would describe it in, in two broad categories. Number one, we're on point for helping protect the .gov space. Mm -hmm. So that's with respect to the federal government, of course. And with respect to the private sector, we're on point on behalf of the federal government in assisting the .com environment to be as secure as possible. We, we don't handle the .mil, which is a Department of Defense mm -hmm. uh, endeavor. Okay, so with that in mind, Congress is in the process of passing a variety of laws giving DHS even more responsibility. Is DHS able to handle those responsibilities because it's like requires people, it requires money? So the answer is yes, and I would, uh, I would break that down if I may. Mm -hmm. We have current capabilities, we uh, are building additional capabilities, and we have plans uh, to yet increase uh, those capabilities. And so we have quite a plan, but we have a current capacity to assist in the .gov and .com environments to a very significant degree. So can you describe that in a little bit more detail? Because, sure. for example, you've been given insider threat detection and mitigation. How would you go about doing something like that? So let me, let me give some perfect examples. We have uh, certain tools, uh, Einstein mm -hmm. uh, being one of them, uh, 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 CDM, uh, continuous diagnostics, monitoring uh, being another. And in the .gov space, uh, we are pushing those tools out to other departments and agencies so that they employ them and increase their cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been given the authority for the Secretary of Homeland Security to issue operational directives driving that conduct across the federal government, and he, in fact, has issued the first operational directive. Okay, so, but for example, you recently outsourced, it was like a almost a record contract, like a billion dollars to outsource, I believe it was intrusion detection. Is, or is that a sign that you're going to outsource a lot of the capability that you're being mandated to perform? Uh, so I, I, I don't think there's a one size fits all. So it, we are not uh, adhering to a, we're gonna outsource everything, mm -hmm. nor are we adhering to a model where we are going to build the capacity ourselves across the board. It's a mix and match according to the best technology out there, what our capabilities are, what the needs are, and matching those. Okay, now with regard to securing the dot com and the critical infrastructure sure. as best you can, there, General Hayden recently said that Russia and China, for example, have been acknowledged as compromising the critical infrastructure like the power grid. Iran and North Korea were also described as having similar capabilities, but much more of loose cannons regarding the fact they have little to lose. What is our capability to stop countries like Iran and North Korea that are very capable and are attempting to potentially do something other countries already have? So our, uh, uh, it's not a static environment. Mm -hmm. uh, our capabilities are evolving. They are strengthening. We have a team, uh, a world-renowned uh, team, the ICS CERT team, mm -hmm. that's our sort of SWAT team in the industrial control system environment that assists se sectors in mm -hmm. strengthening their capabilities. There are some sectors that are far more advanced than others, the electricity subsector, the financial sector, uh, in the sharing of information, in the building of a cyber, uh, a cyber security ecosystem. Uh, I think we are in ever improving uh, condition. Okay, it's ever improving. I guess my concern though is when you have things like Russia and China, like one Wall Street Journal article said, you know, a few years ago that Russia and China theoretically have their finger on the button. To what level of damage could an adversary like Iran and North Korea cause for the U.S. infrastructure like the power grid right now? Uh, so that, uh, I, I, I'm, I can't really give a very specific answer, but we recognize the cybersecurity threat. I think our uh, critical infrastructure recognizes that, and that's why we collectively and individually 
are so focused on improving our cybersecurity. But let me take it out of, if I can, the critical mm -hmm. stru uh, infrastructure space and say this. When I talk to private country, uh, companies, mm -hmm. and even when I talk to uh, international partners, the, the general principle is, you know, what we need to do is build our defenses so that we make it as difficult as possible for the intruder to get in. Mm -hmm. The very sophisticated actor can get in, uh, but the question is, how difficult have we made it? Number one, how quickly can we detect it and expel without the damage being very significant? And we are improving, and our partners are improving all the time.